No climbs. What did you say? Yeah, I said no climbs. Hey, you're about to learn how to solve a system of linear differential equations. But before we get into that, I'm going to try to draw a bridge between what you did last week and what you're going to do this week. And it involves this null cline idea. You kind of did it in class with WebEx last week, but we're going to just more formalize it. It goes like this. Null clines are similar to the equilibrium solutions that we studied back in our first order, just regular differential equations. Null clines are um, the, the image of where is the rate of change zero. So let's start with dx dt. Now we really need to do both, but let's start with dx dt. dx dt is zero when? Well, since dx dt equals y, dx dt is zero when y equals zero. So in the graph, y equals zero, of course, is just the horizontal, aka the x-axis. I hope you can see it there. Now, what we do with the null cline to communicate to a knowledgeable audience that that null cline is indicating that dx dt is zero is we put little hash marks on the null cline indicating that dx dt is zero, therefore x is not changing. You did not hear that right. dx dt is zero, therefore x is not changing. So think about this. If x is not changing, like here's a value for x. If x is not changing, all I can do is go straight vertical. So to indicate that this null cline is when x is not changing, we put little vertical tick marks, hash marks, on that line. So if you were a knowledgeable audience and you saw a null cline, null, zero, rate of change is zero. Now you're about to see another one, so you might wonder, well, which one is that? Well, with a vertical little tick mark or hash mark there, then we know that vertical indicates X is not changing. Now, the reason I keep saying it over and over and over again is because, in my experience, students just kind of go, let's, let's not think. Let's just memorize what the guy told me to do. I don't memorize it. Make sense of it. X goes this way, and if X isn't changing, we gotta go this way. So mark the null cline appropriately to indicate that X is not changing. That's what you see here. Now we also can get a null cline from dy dt being zero. dy dt is negative two X minus three Y. And negative two X minus three Y equals zero when? Well, let's do some algebra and figure it out. Negative three Y equals add the two X over divide by negative three. Another null cline, a place where one of the rates of change is zero, or many places where the rate of change is zero, is along the line y equals negative two thirds x. Now y equals negative two thirds x. That would be a line with a negative slope, negative two thirds x, maybe something about, mm, just to get a visual of it. This is the line y equals negative two thirds x. Now, on that null cline, we want to put the little tick marks or hash marks to indicate who's not changing. So let's think through it again. Don't just memorize, think. If y is not changing, y runs this way. Y is changing. If y is not changing, so we put little horizontal tick marks on this line to indicate y is not changing. Now there is one location, notice, where both dx dt and dy dt are zero. We do have an equilibrium point at zero, zero that you'll hear more about later. But just notice that that is the one and only place where both dx dt and dy dt are zero is where those two null clines intersect. All right, one last thing. We like to do this analysis to get an image of what do solutions look like? Solutions now that we're in different in systems of differential equations, solutions can have uh, can come in multiple forms. Ultimately, and you'll see this later, 
ultimately, we want to make sense of x is a function of t, y is a function of t, because if you think about it, that's been kind of the goal of this class since the beginning, except back before we had more, uh, we had systems like we have now, we just had a single differential equation. So the goal was to get y as a function of t, that's all there was. Now, we want y as a function of t, we want x as a function of t, but you could take those two planes and rotate and look at, look, the t-axis come out here, and look at the x, well I should say it this way, the y-x plane. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the x-y plane. So what would solutions to this system of differential equations look like in the x-y plane? Just to get us start on the thinking, the analysis of what's happening here, let's do the following. Notice that the red null cline, the blue null cline, split up my x-y phase plane, as we call it, into four regions. There is a region right here. Let me just label it region one. There's this little region here. We'll call it region two. And then there's this region here. We'll call it region three. And then there's this region over here. We'll call it region four. There are four regions that the two lines split up my plane into. Let's look at region one. Just as a way to get my brain thinking, I'm going to choose a point in region one. Would you all agree that the point 1, 1 is in region 1? I hope you would. So if x is 1, y is 1, dx dt equals y. If y is 1, dx dt equals 1. dx dt is positive. If dx dt is positive, that means x is increasing. So in this region, x is changing in a positive way. If x is 1, y is 1. Negative 2 minus 3, that would be a negative 5. dy dt is negative. If dy dt is negative in this region, then y would be decreasing. So the overall trajectory, where you have a little increase here, decrease here, the overall trajectory is like this. I got scared there for a minute. Go into region, oh, let's go to region two over here. Pick a point that you know is in region two. Now, here's what I do. Some of you guys are like, I'm gonna pick something really close in here. But the danger of that is, if you pick something really close in here, you might accidentally slip it back into region one and mess it all up. So, don't be so conservative. Go a little crazy here. Here's what I know for sure. Negative 100, one. I'm pretty sure that the point negative 100, 1, is in region 2. So, if x is negative 100 and y is 1, first of all, if y is 1, dx dt is positive, and if dx dt is positive, that means x is increasing, moving to the right. Negative 100, 1. Negative 100 would make this positive 200, minus 3 times 1, Positive 200 minus 3 times 1 is positive. And so here in region 2, dy dt is positive, And if dy dt is positive, y is moving in that direction. So the overall trajectory is somewhat like that, a little to the right and up. Now what about region 3 down in here? Now region 3 is rather large, so it's not that hard to mess up in region Three, you could go like negative two, negative one, just as an example. So let's do the same thing. If we're at the point negative two, negative one, as an example, dx dt equals y. y is negative one. dx dt is negative. If x is changing negatively, that means it's going in that direction. If x is negative two and y is negative one, negative two times negative two, positive four, minus three, that would be like a positive 7. And with a positive 7, then y is going in this direction. And so overall, the trajectory is like that. And then finally, in region 4, again, I would encourage you to don't be like, I'm going to pick something in here and then accidentally slip into here or something. So get out there and make sure that you're good. I think it's pretty safe to go like uh, 10, negative 1. If you pick 10, negative 1, first of all, dx dt is equal to y. And if y is negative 1, then y is decreasing. 
And if y is decreasing, then what's x doing? I mean, sorry, if, see, I just messed that up. Woohoo! Good thing I cut myself there. If y is negative 1, dx dt is negative. And if dx dt is negative, x is getting smaller, moving to the left. Negative 2 times x, negative 2 times 10, minus 3 times negative 1. So negative 2 times 10 would be like a negative 20. Minus 3 times a negative 1 would be like a plus 3. That's going to be negative. And so dy dt is negative, which means y is decreasing. So the overall trajectory is something like that. Now, overall then, what does this tell us? So if we had an initial condition, if I was to tell you that at time t equals 0, x equals, and y equals, what would the solution to that differential equation look like graphically in the xy phase plane? Now we kind of have a sense. So, just, I'm going to make one up here. What if I told you that at time t equals 0, x equals something and y equals something that we started right here? Here's what we know. The overall trajectory here is down and to the right. So I know that solutions that start here are going to start heading in this direction. Now, I don't know exactly how, but roughly that direction. Now, looking ahead, I see that we have a null climb here, so that means we must go vertical there, transitioning us into this region, which now is going to move us to the left and down, which brings us near to this null climb, which means the, tra the trajectory is going to be horizontal as you cross over that null climb into this region. When we get into this region, we see the trajectory is, is left and up, which means we're going to be moving in this direction. And then as we, if we moved into this no, uh, into this region, we'd be going up and to the right. But with that equilibrium, uh, probably it's going to get sucked into that equilibrium. Here's what I'm seeing. Based on this trajectory, down and to the right, vertical, down and to the left, horizontal, up and to the left, <laughs> It appears as though solutions are going to sink into that equilibrium point at zero, zero. Now, we could do the same kind of analysis out here. What if we had an initial condition out here? What if I told you that when t equals zero, x equals whatever, y equals whatever, so that our initial condition is right here? What's going to happen next? This region tells us that trajectories, solutions to the differential equation graphically, are going to be moving up and to the right. As we head towards this null climb, solutions are going to go horizontal because we know from our previous work, which moves us into this big region 1, which is a down and to the right region. And if we were to cross this null climb, we would then go vertical and things would happen. But my guess is it's going to get cycled into that equilibrium. It looks like we have a sink. An attractor, if you will. So, a, an initial phase of analysis of systems of linear differential equations, which will be our focus, we're going to start with a null Klein analysis. Find out where the two rates of change are zero to create your null Kleins. The red one, the blue one. Hash mark those things appropriately. Once you have your null Klein analysis, you can start to make sense of what the graphs of our solutions will look like. Now, moving forward in this series, we're going to actually solve the differential equation, symbolically get functions, and then we'll check to see if our thinking actually makes sense based on this analysis now.